it's Rachel. It's Rachel Kohler Dog Training, and I'm here with Susan with Pack Leader Dog Training. Hey. And we are here for our weekly Q and A. Yes. Um, it's Q and A 22 this week. Every every week when I say like the Q and A number out loud, I'm always kind of in shock that we've done. I know. 21 of these already. And if it was yesterday, it would literally it would have been Q and A 22 on 222, and that would have been perfect. Oh, oh why wow. didn't we do it? Why didn't we do it early, Susan? Come on. <laughs> because we had to be on the same time. Like, it has oh, to yes. be every Tuesday. We couldn't do a random Monday. It's Q&A Tuesday for a reason. Right, exactly. We were, we were talking about how much that rhymed. It is pretty nice. It's pretty catchy. Q &A yeah, Tuesday. I love Q&A <laughs> Tuesday. Um, so we don't have anyone on yet. So I'm going to go ahead and post um, on my Instagram. Letting the Instagram people know that we're live. Hopefully, Instagram will be compatible with our streaming system pretty soon. Yes. I would like to have them be involved um how is your tuesday going miss susan well it could have been a little smoother but uh we got there yeah um, we're here now yeah we're here now because it was just a day my yeah. tuesday was just a day um so if anybody doesn't know or well no one yeah sorry i didn't know if you want to you don't have to open that can of worms if you don't want to. Well, I didn't I mean to like, press you into it. I asked you, and I was like, sure. Well, no, I won't do that. I'll do something else. Um, I might share that later. So I do have, um, if you haven't been watching my story, I have a new board and train. Her name's Allie. Um, I believe she's 15 weeks. Joan, if you're watching, 15 weeks. Um, and she's here for um, her basic obedience. Hopefully to get some confidence um, building skills as well. Our main goal is just to switch all of her obedience commands that the owners have taught her over to the e-collar. So I was just talking to Rachel um, about her because so far she's inconsistent with her numbers. Hey, Deborah. Um, it's good to see you. So um, she's inconsistent with her numbers. So I'm just um, kind of troubleshooting what her working level is. So. I did want to touch on e-collars a little bit. So, Rachel, if you're okay with it, I'll just go ahead and talk about um, the e-collars that we use and how they work. Because I know Deborah was kind of wanting to do a live on e-collars. So, since she's here, I'll go ahead and dive in. And then, Deborah, if you have any questions, um, go ahead and let us know. So, we use e-collar technologies. Oh, hey, Doris. How are you? How's that? <laughs> um, so, if, if you want to use one of our e-collars that we recommend, it's e-collar technologies. What you do is you have to teach the dog the basic obedience command first. So the dog has to have a basic understanding of each command before you then transfer it over to the e-collar, at least with how we train it. So let's use place, for example. Um, so once your dog knows place, you can say place. Oh, nice. Hi, Nash. Um, so once your dog knows place, you'll start by priming your dog. So what that means is I'm going to go ahead and say place. Um, to the dog a handful of times so that the dog is like, oh, we're working on place right now. Now with the e-collar on, I'm going to try to find the dog's working level. So um, you start at level one and you walk up to the bed and stop. Have the dog be stationary. Hold the collar or the receiver in at level one. If your dog doesn't do anything, help them out with the leash. So pressure's on the whole time. Help them out with the leash until they go on the bed and lay down. Once they're on the bed and they lay down, all pressure is released. Mm -hmm. um, you reward, and then you say break and have them get off. You continue that process, dialing up one number on the remote each time until the dog, you can see that the dog's feeling it. So they'll just give like a little bit of a head tilt or like an ear flick, uh, something really subtle. Once you're seeing that, that's the number you want to stop on because the dog's feeling it, but they can't decide what to do with that pressure. Mm -hmm. um, so you same setup at that number hold in the stem the dog doesn't move on to the place bed help them out with the leash when they're laying down the place bed pressure's off you reward um wait a second break and release um and then you'll do that again and again at that same number until when you hold down the stem the dog's like oh i know what this means and they go into the bed and lay down so at that point we know that the dog knows how to turn the pressure off so you add the word back in and take the pressure away. So they only feel the pressure if they don't listen. So if I'd say place and the dog's like, hmm, that must say no, 
pulled in the button at their working level, so let's say a five, and then the dog's like, oh, sorry about that, and walks on the bed and lays down. Um, if they don't, then help them out with the leash. So that was just a cute little quick, um, semi not quick, but. <laughs> no, I think that's great. I think um, the way we train with the e-collar is like, I love it and it makes so much sense because we're teaching the dogs how to turn off the pressure. So that process, you just explain and like talking for the dog, like, oh, my bad. And then like they hop on the place bed. Like this pressure isn't just some random thing that happens. Um, I really, and we really, with the way we train, we want to be like, hey, this is here, and I've shown you how to turn it off. So now they know how to turn it off, and we know how we can help them if they're still confused because of all the steps we do in our training process. Right. And, like, I guess I'm biased, but, like, that's why I love the way we train um, because the dogs have such a clear understanding of everything. Um, I love and it. It's, it's really fun to see them, like, to uh -huh. see them, yeah, put the dots together. Oh, my God, that's so fun. Yes, um, I used to, I have a lot of favorite things, parts about training, but my like very first thing that made me fall in love with training was watching the dogs have those aha moments. Like when you are, we'll just say like that, doing that place, doing CS place with the dog and you're doing that over and over and over. And then when you put on the pressure, the dog's like, okay. And they go and they hop on their place bed. It's like, to me, that is just like fireworks. Like, oh my right? gosh, like I just put this stem on and you were like, mm, I know how to turn that off. And like hopped onto your place bed, like I just love that so right. much. Right, and like I'll turn to my client and I'll I'll be thinking like, did you see that? Like, <laughs> did you see it? It's so great. It's like that dog just oh. did it. Um. So no one live is asking us questions yet, but I do have some that I wrote down ahead of time. Okay, Rachel. Yes, ma'am. My my fifteen week old Australian Shepherd seems to still pull on the prong collar. I've been working on heel, but she is not overly food motivated. I use her food to train. When we are outside, it seems really distracting for her, and I have to give firm leash pops to get her focus. Is this okay? I can't afford an e-collar just yet. All right, so a couple things. 15-week-old uh, pulling on the prong collar. So that kind of tells me that this pup doesn't know what that pressure means. Um, so they don't mind just pulling through it because to them it's like, well, I don't know, this pressure's here, but I want to go over there, so I'm going like, to keep pulling over there. Um, so there's a few things to address. So what I want to do is I want to like take a few steps back uh, when working with this puppy. Um, so my go-to would be forget the walks. Like, we're not worried about the walks right now. Um, I want you inside, and I want to teach you heel positioning inside. So I would go back to food lowering to teach puppy, this is the position I want you to be in. Um, I would start with that. Then I would... Um, wean out of the food lure and then add the leash pressure back in. Um, but again, we want the puppy to understand what the leash pressure means um, because clearly um, he or she is not responding to it, right? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so, like the, the pressure, but mm -hmm. uh, leash pops the puppy responds to. Okay. Um, so what I would try to do is teach the puppy to respond to the pressure, and then if not, we can fall back on the leash pops um but right now with the puppy being so young like my like gut instinct is like the puppy probably just doesn't know how to turn it off so to do that um you just really weird wall exercise <laughs> i don't know what else to call it so i'm going to try my best to explain it um so what i do is i go up against the wall um whatever like straight surface surface you can find have your puppy between you and the wall and um, I usually like to food lure when I first start it. So food lure your puppy just like you were before. And then apply like a slight leash pressure backwards. And then with your food lure and yourself, walk backwards with the puppy. Once you take like a step backwards, you let go of pressure. Good. Here's your treat. Um, and then you food lure forward again. So I do that a few times with my puppies. And then I'll take away my food lure, apply that leash pressure backwards. I'll move backwards myself with the puppy to help them out. But they, what's, what that does is it teaches the puppy to yield to this pressure because all of my training is like in seasons two, it's pressure on, pressure off. That's the motto, right? So I want to teach you to turn this pressure off to start. So do that exercise with the puppy. Leash pressure back. Puppy takes a step backwards. Good. Here's your treat. And then you slowly phase away from the yard, 
from the wall and doing that inside of bunch and especially for puppies, lots and lots and lots of repetitions. Um, because I want them to know this position is where I want you to be. If you pull forward, there's leash pressure and then you got to get back to where I want you to be. Um, so that would be my go-to. So keep working on that a bunch. Once your pup's got a pretty good heel inside, then go outside. Sorry, hold on. Okay, she was just getting comfortable. I got <laughs> I got to hold my dog accountable in her kennel while we're doing this. Right. Um. So that would be my go-to because then the puppy understands what the pressure means. Then you can start adding distractions. So now you move away from the wall. If you've got a backyard, go to your backyard. Then move to your front yard and walk in front of your house. And then you'll be like. You don't have to progress that slowly, but it's like, I don't want to just jump straight to going on a walk with a young puppy because everything is so distracting. And while you can use those leash props to grab their attention, I do worry that they're going to become desensitized to those leash props too, if they're not sure why they're happening, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Right. I, don't know. I feel like I skipped a few steps, but that's my go-to. No, that was great. You, you talked about that like I did the e-collar thing. So I know. That's awesome. Because I was just doing that today with my one-on-ones. <laughs> oh. Uh, Creature and Otis. Oh, awesome. Um, let's see. We have a question from Deborah. Is there a quick connect collar for the e-collar rather than the belt buckle style? Yes. Oh, yeah. So mm -hmm. do you want to answer that? Or what? Oh, you can because do you have yours with you? Oh, no, she's wearing it. Or, no, she's oh, not she's not wearing it. Oh my god, she's not I'm wearing bad. it. I'm a bad dog trainer. How are you gonna hold her accountable? Because I'll look at her. No, okay. I know I'm horrible. <laughs> Guys, don't listen to me. Okay, so this is always, the quick one. Always have your e collar on your dog so you're ready. Go ahead. Yeah. Listen to Susan, don't listen to me. But here's but I want to demonstrate my dog's cute collar. It's purple. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um super cool. So you size it to them with this buckle. And then it's got the click. I love it because you don't have to worry about fit. You fit it to your dog really well once, and then you're good to go. Um, got these off of, I believe, their website. I had to special order this one because I wanted purple. Um, but they have them on their website, eCollar Technologies. Mm -hmm. I don't actually know if that's their website handle. but It's, it's eCollar.com. E okay. Um, yeah. But, yes, yeah, so these, like... I really like them because then you don't have to worry about fit. You don't have to worry about anything. Yes. That's how I feel about them too. I love right? Them. Okay. It's a and this is, <laughs> this is completely off topic, but speaking of the e-collar that I have and can show because it's not on my dog, um, I just love this. And Susan, it kind of ties into your post today, which we can chat about in a second if you want. Oh, okay. Um, oh. But I got this name tag and it's like right on her e-collar. And I like that because she doesn't really wear a flat collar. So now if we're off leash hiking in the woods or whatever, it's like, hey, look, your name's right on your e-collar. Not that she would ever, like, whatever. But it gives me peace no, of mind. That's awesome because then you don't have to have three collars on your dog. You know, right. prong, e, flat. Because there's no good place on the e-collar for um, identification. So Right. So these are cool. These are off of Amazon. I just Googled, um, I don't remember. I just, no jingle collars or something like that, or no jingle tags or something, um, but I like these as well. Yeah. I recommend those to all my clients, because I'm just like, please have your dog wear their tags, and that's always my thing. Like, your dog should always have a name tag on for safety purposes. I always get on my parents about their dog. Um, he's got his name and phone number engraved in his collar, and I'm like, don't put him outside without his collar on. What if? You never know. Mm -hmm. So, Susan taught me, or Susan, you brought up a good point. You made me think of something today with your post you had. So do you want to do you want to share that information on here as well? Yeah. So today I did a post on microchipping. Um, is it for you? Right. So if you have a, if you have if I would have a young puppy and they still needed to be spayed or neutered, I do spay and neuter my dogs. Um, I'm going to go ahead and microchip them while they're under anesthesia. If I had an adult dog, which I did, um, that wasn't microchipped. Honestly, I would still do it. So microchipping, it's just like a little, um, it's about the size of a grain of rice and it's implanted with a needle under the skin between the shoulder blades. Um, what that allows you to do, it does, you can't track them. I know you can't track them. Um, but if someone finds your dog, you 
take them to a vet or the SPCA and we have like this scanner gun that you scan and it comes up with this really long number. Um, that long number you type into a database and it's gonna bring up your personal information. Now the one thing that people don't realize um, is that if your dog was microchipped, let's say you got it through the SPCA, like your dog through the SPCA, the SPCA microchips dogs. The owners never transfer the information to them. This happens all the time. Or if you get your microchip from like Tractor Supply or some kind of pet store, whatever, it was never registered, period. So we would get lost dogs all the time, randomly cats, but no one ever microchips their cat. I do. Um, so, because you never know. I'm like a cat, like a dog. My dog's going to come back. My cat, he might hide under a freaking log. I don't know. So anyway, um, all the dogs that came in, I would say 80% at least. We scan them. Here's the number. Yes. Type it in the database. Not registered. Well, that freaking sucks. Because. Kind of, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to say, I'm kind of kicking myself a little bit. Because Gaia had surgery two weeks ago. And I was just so flustered about the 15 things she needed to have done. I didn't even think. Uh, I just put up her, her cute little folder. Aww, and she's, and yeah, obviously. Um, she's not microchipped because I was talking to Susan earlier and I was like, oh my gosh. Because my thing was, I'm like, well, guys already spayed, so she's not getting spayed, so I can't get a microchip in her. I didn't know they they don't have to be under they, they don't have to be under for that. It's just, oh, guess who's getting a microchip next time I go to the vet? <laughs> um, which won't be for a year. Stay healthy, please, for once. Um but yeah, I don't know why I didn't have that done then. But that would be like such a great peace of mind. Now, question for you. And mm -hmm. I don't know if this is different with different ones. So I take her to the vet. They put a microchip in her. I give them all my information. Or I go online and I register it. I do what I got to do. Is that done? Or do you have to update that every, like obviously if you change your information. But is that yeah. said and done? It depends on the microchipping. Um, or um I'm sorry, it depends on your vet, but like, so with us, oh, and the microchip company. Okay, so we used Home Again, which is the ones that have like the little yellow tag, the little house tag. Um, so at our vet hospital, we microchip your dog. We register your shit for you. Whoops. So whatever's in the computer, we type that in for you. So whatever phone number you gave us, all that stuff. Now um, we give you all the information, like your, um, you get the really long number, you get the little house tag. You would go to their website, create an account, and then you can upload a photo of your pet. You can like put all the important information, like if it had any medical alerts, that way if someone mm -hmm. finds your dog, they'd be like, oh gosh, he's diabetic. I should have him checked or whatever. Um, but yeah, if you ever move or change your phone number, you have to go and update that because how would, and how would they know? Um, now. So with our vet, it's registered, it's done. So your information is always linked to that dog now. But with Home Again, you get a year of service. Um, I don't remember what they call that, like a membership. You get a year's membership. You don't have to have a membership to have your tag linked to your dog. Okay. That's that what I was yeah. The membership is like added bonuses. Now, it is really freaking awesome, the bonuses, especially if you have a dog that eats things. Um, so they'll cover up to, like if your dog gets lost, they'll send out like missing pet alerts in a like 50 mile radius to all the vet hospitals, shelters. So they'll get a fax saying, hey, this pet's missing, keep an eye out. Um, if your pet is found away from you, they pay up to like 200 miles to get the dog back to you, dog or cat. Wow. And you have 24 seven access to a veterinary um, pet poison line. So normally if you call the pet poison lines, like $70, if you're a membership of this, if you have your membership, it's free. So it's really awesome because, um, my one coworker's dog accidentally ate one of her or um, could have eaten one of her pills that she dropped. Like I forget what the medicine was for. Um, so they did, they, they, they're like, if she did get the pill, she should have blood work, fluids done. So it's like really awesome because they can tell you like this is what you should do to make sure your pet's fine. Nice. It's really cool. Also, I like that dog is just like, oh, here's the pill, I'll eat it. Whereas uh, yeah. every other dog in the world, you have to pill them. <laughs> I know. 
It's, it's the dropping effect. Oh, funny, funny. Funny. They're mm -hmm. like, oh my God, what do I got to get that before they pick it up? That happened with Guy last night. I was giving her an um, antibiotic and like I dropped it and she was like, and so I was her pill and she was like, nah. Oh. A pillar. I did get excited though. I did think she was going to eat it off the ground. Which oh my God. We've had talks about eating things off the ground, but I'm like, hey. I was going to say, would you drop pill and you can eat it? No. So like it's the only thing you She's... can drop? <laughs> so, okay. So in my room, uh, I will like throw her kibble on the ground and we'll do like enrichment games with kibble. And sometimes that includes me just throwing it on the ground. So it's like in my room, sure, something's like I drop food on the ground because what food is there other than hers? Sure, eat it. But like in the kitchen, you're not allowed to pick stuff up off the ground. She's allergic to everything. You're going to eat something in the kitchen and it's going to kill you. <laughs> uh, but yes, I'm glad we had that talk because I'm like, I don't know. I thought, they had, I thought microchipping was surgery. So now when she goes back in a year because she won't have any more health issues for a year, we'll go get your vaccines updated, then I'll get her microchipped. I can make a visit just for that, but so I'll always the at the vet. The reason we recommend it during the anesthesia be is because the needle, and I would, so <laughs> I would tell people this, if their pet was like going to be spayed or neutered. Um, I'm like, if you're interested in the microchip, do it now when they're under anesthesia, because the needle is probably at least four times the size of a vaccine needle, because mm -hmm. it has to have, there's a grain of rice, and that has to fit in a needle, which is going to be bigger than that grain of rice. And then, but I will tell you this. It was us that was more squeamish. Like, none of the technicians wanted to do it to the dog. I'm like, I'll do it. You know why? Because the dog didn't care. Right. Like, that's good. We were like, oh, what? And, <laughs> and the dog's like this. What are you doing, my man? Because they can't think. Like, yeah. us with needles, we could be like, oh, my God, the needle's coming. The dog's like, right. hey, what's going on over there? They None right. of them ever noticed. And you do it right. real quick. Right. Yeah. And then it's like, maybe it's uncomfortable for a minute, but if, God forbid, we ever need it, then we'll have it. Well, and then honestly, like, if you guys have any tech, um, vet tech questions, ask them too. Um, so what you do to, like, dis you distract them. So, like, mm -hmm. I'm the technician holding, and I have this hand, so the head's facing this way. And then I have this hand, so I'm holding, like, under their abdomen and under their neck. So as I'm holding them, I'm like scratching them and like moving around. So I'm like la 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 la. And so like when they do, they their, don't even feel that one pressure. Don't. No. Can you hold Gaia, please, while she gets her shot? When I she gets her um thing. Okay, thanks. Yeah. All right. Check this out. Doris says the FedEx guy just came to the door. When one bark lay, and he's getting it. Awesome. And he and you did lay. So you're adding in lay so. and not this um, place. So that's awesome. So, um, thanks, Doris. So, and he just came. So, like, how awesome! You're like listening to Susan's podcast, <laughs> and then perfect scenario. Real so, dog training. Doris has a dog named Nash that we've been working on his reactivity with people coming in, like knocking doorbell, that kind of thing. Um, so he's been known to kind of charge at the door, um, jump at it, or, and we've been able. To, well, we've been teaching him to work on stop charging the door. If you want to do one alert bark, she's fine with that. So that's her personal choice. Um, but she's a, she should be able to then say, like, enough. And he stops barking. Um, and then tell him to go place or lay. And then he lays there until he's released. So um, that's really awesome. Like, really good improvement, Doris. Awesome. Awesome job doing your homework. That's amazing. I'm so glad I got to meet her and Nash when I was visiting with you. Right? You got to play, like, the that. stranger with the hoodie. Yes. <laughs> Lots of door drills. I love it. It's like, sure. I'll be like big, big and scary at the door. He did great then. So I'm I'm so glad to hear he's keeping up the work. Doris does yeah. awesome with him. She does. Susan does okay. Uh, yeah. I, <laughs> I don't do the work. Doris does. So. Oh, man. That's pretty cool. All right. Next question. All right. As always, Susan's more prepared than I am. I didn't have any. I come up with any words, so <laughs> okay. All right. My new rescue Sheltie gets mad at me and poops in the house if I leave for longer than two hours. I take her out right before I leave, but she still does this. Is this typical for Shelties? Okay, so um she's probably, and I'm gonna say probably because I'm not gonna be that person, but like she's not doing it because she hates you. 
Um, it's not out of spite. Dogs don't have that emotion. Um, she's probably her schedule's just probably messed up, honestly. Um, now you said it was two years old mm -hmm. and they leave the house for two hours and she poops inside. Mm -hmm. Um, so my first thought is hopefully this is all it is, is just, um, scheduling. Um, so maybe like feeding potty time, um, is not right. Maybe the dog's not actually potty trained. Um, I don't know if this is a new thing. Uh, but I would be really mindful of when you're feeding. Make sure you're not free feeding because if you're free feeding, they get to graze all day and then they're going to want to go poop whenever, right? Um, so make sure you're feeding on a schedule, going out on a schedule, um, or crating your dog. If she's in a crate, she's probably not going to poop in the crate if she doesn't really have to go. Um, and then in that case, if you've, you know, checked all those boxes, my next thing, and I don't know if this is right, Susan, but would be maybe check out a vet. I mean, if your dog actually is potty trained or if this is a new issue and they are still having accidents in the kennel, maybe check out a vet. But I, I would check out all those other situations first. Yeah. I just want to say um, bye to Doris because they're going out to go potty. Oh. So Hi, Talk Doris. To Doris. Um, thanks for hopping on. So, yeah, with the pooping in the house, um, if it's something new, now – they said rescue, so I don't know if that means they just rescued it or if they're just describing she was a rescue. But if, if this dog's new to you, well, either way, actually, if the dog's new to you, you should have a stool sample check. Um, and if this is a new behavior, stool sample. Because just being in the veterinary world, I do know that intestinal parasites will make their bowels move more. So it can cause poop accidents and pee accidents. Now, that's not always the case, but it's possible. Um, the other thing I was going to suggest is, oh, what you kind of already touched on is the schedule. Is like, obviously, she must, she probably gets a little anxious um, when you leave, and so her bowels move. Like when dogs are anxious and they like pace or whatever, yeah, like they're they're just going to poop. So she's not peeing in the house; she's pooping in the house. So try to get her on a better better schedule where she poops before you go i know you tried to do it like right before but really try to alter that schedule so she always poops like in the morning or like my dogs poop morning and evening so you kind of know what's going on um but but it sounds like she's not in the crate and so if you're having poop and pee accidents the the first thing i do is add structure so add the crate in and then can you behave in the crate now you know if you wanted to start doing stuff out of the crate then do that but if we can't behave out of the crate because the house is just a big crate. So you know how you get a crate that's just a big big enough for the dog they can stand and like circle and that's it? It's because they can't make bad choices. So you gave this dog the whole freedom of your house. It's just a big old crate. You're not home to like monitor them. They She can't handle that much freedom right now. So I would crate her. But, yeah. yeah. I agree with that. Um, you have a thought or do you want me to go on to the next one? I thought I had a thought, but I don't actually know where it went. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the worst. Do you allow your dog access to all parts of your house? So Deborah had asked me this on Facebook, and I thought it was a good question we could just talk about. Okay, so my living situation is a little bit different. Ms. Gaia and I share a room, and this room is her house. So she has access to this room. Um, but it's funny that you asked this because I'm not even joking. Mm, two days ago, I always am daydreaming about when I get a house. Um, and I was actually thinking about this exact topic about what am I going to do with Gaia? So super great question. Thank you, Deborah and Susan, I guess for relaying that to me. Um, <laughs> so for me, I don't know. I don't actually know. I didn't come to, up with an answer. So Gaia, knock on one. <laughs> I like how you're like, this is a good question. I was thinking about it. I don't have an answer for you, but. I mean, I was, I was just thinking about it. I didn't, I didn't like solve my problem then and there. I don't have a house yet. Um, but I was thinking if she does have access to like the house, um, I would probably end up just like closing all the doors. So it's like, yeah, you can like walk around if you want, but like you don't need to go into each of these rooms because like what are you gonna be getting into? Um, and then I also have like three nanny cams maybe in this one room because I like to be able to see her no matter where she is. Um, so I'm like, I can't nanny cam up my whole freaking house. What does this look like? So then I'm like, 
if I either, okay, so there's three options. Don't have an answer. So I'll just give you all the, <laughs> the options. <laughs> I'm horrible. Um, she probably won't be created when I'm gone. Unless that's a whole other thing. Right now, how my life is. Do I create her when I'm gone? No. Should I? Maybe. Don't know. Don't come at me. Um, so I could either create her when I've got a whole house. I could put her in one room and have a specific room for her because I might. Um, why not? Or if she has free room in the house, I would close all the extra doors because you don't need like 15 different rooms. You can be like in the living room and then you can lay in the hallway. I don't care. Um, but that's my answer. I don't know. Susan, can you just answer? <laughs> So, well, I'm like, don't come at me either, but. I know, I always forget, can I say, sorry. I yeah. always forget the answer to your question because every time I talk about not creating Gaia, I'm like, Susan's gonna think I'm a crappy dog trainer for not creating Gaia. Like she sleeps in her crate at night, but when I'm not here, I, don't know. I always yeah. think you're gonna be like, you suck, and then I remember. Okay. <laughs> so I do not create. Um, I generally don't create my dogs. Why? Because they don't have any behavior issues to me that would warrant me having to create them. What? That's crazy. Because all the dogs that come through my program get crate trained. It's a good life skill to have. And it's the only way that I can hold them accountable because I'm training them to make better choices. So if I let them have free access to my house, I can't monitor all their choices. Um, and my dogs are trained already. So I do crate train all the dogs that come in. And recently um, I've been adding like more structure to my dog's life because they started to like act silly. Um, so I'm gonna start to, I start to crate, crate them a little bit more now. Um, but I personally don't kennel my dogs when I leave. I am fortunate enough to have two dogs that don't have any issues like that. Um, they don't chew on anything when I'm gone. They don't mark in the house, you know, that kind of thing. The only thing is, which I told Deborah. I close my my bedroom door. So I have a guest bedroom that's Sadie's bed. So if you ever come to my house, Rachel, um, I'm gonna have to watch the covers before that because there's like dog hair and all that stuff. Anyway, that's her bed. It's my bed, I share it with Sadie. Yeah, it's, it's jointly owned by Sadie and Rachel. My bed though is um, that memory foam. So it's like, and Sadie was notorious before we got our second bed for she would be up there when you don't notice. Even when we're home sometimes, you'd hear a thud, and that was her jumping off my bed. So I'm like, what the heck? And of course, it's, it's my fault because what? Uh, where was I, right? But anyway, so we I would go in the bedroom and be like, what are you doing? So Sadie's allowed on that bed, but I close my bedroom door because I'm not gonna set her up for failure. I can't right. control her being out there, so just close the door so you don't get on my bed. Um, and then my husband does have, um, he collects football cards. So some of them expensive, some of them not either way. If, if somebody got in there and like, even like rolled around on the floor and damaged them, like they're not going to chew them, but if they would like go in there and play or wrestle and destroy some of his cards, he would not be a happy camper. So his door is closed as well. Mm -hmm. And I close my bathroom doors because I'm like, you don't need to be in there. Right. I've always done that. So it's kind of like what Rachel described. They have access to living room, kitchen, dining room, hallways. That's it. Oh Brittany. my God, Brittany. You should hop on here too, girl. Hey, Brittany. So um, Brittany was one of the trainers that we met while we were interning up in Rhode Island. She has since, like all of us, started her own training business. And we're very excited for her. So. Uh, yeah, it'd be cool to have you on here sometime. Right? Mm -hmm. Oh, guys, I saw her name and it like took my brain a second to realize like, Brittany, oh, hey. <laughs> I was like, oh, gosh. How fun. All right. You ready for your next one? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'll come. I'll, I'll, have, I'll have topics next week, I promise. All right. My golden retriever has started to act scared of the vacuum. How do I get her used to it? She runs from the room when I turn it on. All right, so yes, Brittany, we should. Brittany says we really should. Um, so my something that stands out to me, and then I'll like go into how I would desensitize that, um, is she has started to act scared of it. Um, so that's not like a huge thing, but like it, it did like 
bring up a flag because how old is this dog? How long has she not been scared of it? Something happened that made her scared of it. Now, while we can't change the past, just observe her behavior, see if anything else she's acting weird around. Um, because for me, it's like when dogs are like doing one thing or fine with something, and then all of a sudden they're just not, I'm kind of like, what happened there? Um, but not, not saying like anything bad happened, but like just observe her behaviors. So what I do for desensitization is my favorite command ever, which is place. Place is like the best command ever because it teaches the dog like you can lay on this cot. No one's hurting you. You're fine. Right? Um, so I would start by training this dog a really solid place. Susan's got some. You have how-to place videos, right? You have all your how-to series videos. Though. Okay. Yeah. Um, I always ask, but I'm like, I think you've got them all. Um, Susan has an amazing how-to train place videos. Um, so I would train your dog a really solid place command. Um, and then start adding in duration and distractions and all that good stuff. And then eventually introduce the vacuum. Um, now, here's the thing. And this ticks off some people. Dogs on place. You roll the vacuum in. Dog's like, mm, I'm going to go. And they get off to go run upstairs. We're going to say no. Correct. And the dog's going to go back on the place bed. I'm not correcting you for being scared of the vacuum. I'm correcting you for breaking your place command. Um, so depending on how severely scared the dog is of the vacuum, I would start by just pushing it around and not even having it on. So I'm going to push the vacuum a little bit. Dog's not breaking. Good job. Here's a reward. And I would do that. And then I would like eventually work up to turning on the vacuum. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah, that's what I would do too. And so like she said, it depends on how scared the dog is of the vacuum. Like if it's severe, then I would literally reward for the vacuum coming into the room slightly, you know. Mm -hmm. So yes, we correct for breaking, but also don't forget to reward for the presence of the vacuum as well and like working through it. So if you don't break place, good, here's your reward. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, if I keep looking this way, so if I keep shifting that way, um, it's because I do have Allie on a place. This is only day two of having her. Um, now her owners did all of her basic obedience commands, like the food luring and leash pressure part, for the most part. Um, I'm layering over the e-collar, and one of the commands I did was place. So, no. So, this is going to do some real life dog training here. Um, and she's going to leave me to sit here and not know what to say, but that's fine. Um, that's the, we were talking earlier about how great these lives are because for our old Q&As, we would pre-record them. So it was like very serious. Here's our questions. going to go through them and like, this is what we're talking about. And now it's just like, eh, we can do whatever. Um, oh, hey, Joan. <laughs> so, um, as I was well, talking about, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say you can talk about that and then I'll, we got a question. Oh, okay. Um, just to finish on Allie. So she's on the place cot. Um, so I kept looking at her because she kept looking at her leash. So she's on a tie back um, to hold her accountable. And so that if she breaks place, she can't go too far. So I did transfer that command to the e-collar. And if she would get off, I would say no and do e-collar pressure. What she actually did there was start chewing on her leash that she's tied back. Um, so I just said no, and I gave her, like, a little leash pop. Um, and I know Joan would like to see her, so we'll see if we can get that on there. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Right? She's so cute. So she's on that tie back there to the TV stand. I love it. Um, I was telling Susan once she got her, I was like, I'm so excited that I'm not even there. I'm like, I can't wait to hear all about her and see all the pictures. It's just so exciting. And, like, we share like all of our experiences like we talk every day about dog training so i'm like i can't wait to hear all about everything ali's doing and this is great i know i know and you like, well, well like honestly we for the most part at least so far um we'll end up kind of training each other's dogs with each other <laughs> yeah <laughs> because i'll call her and be like this is happening what do i do and she's like well how about this i'm like oh thank god <laughs> right um, and like you said in a voice memo you sent me today, you, were, you got excited about something I told you and you're like, I'm excited too. And it's like we share, like like our successes are like together. Yeah, we, we get double like, the successes and um, double the knowledge I told her the other day too because right. like I'm, I go through things oh, yeah. with her and she goes through things with me. So not only have I trained all the dogs I've trained, but I've also now have the knowledge of 
all the dogs she's trained too and like all the techniques that she's used for the different dogs so it's really beneficial it's great it's great um so got a question uh deborah says you touched on it briefly but do i understand you keep the e-collar on all day and remove it at night yes i do so it's kind of like oh, yeah because you're giving me crap oh yeah yeah so it's kind of like um you get in the you get up in the morning get dressed so this is a dog getting dressed so we get up in the morning we put the e-collar on um we rotate it throughout the day every four to six hours if you can you can go like every six hours but um if you're home and can do it every four to six i do uh because they're wearing it all day um so yeah it hasn't they have it on all day and then at night as long as they have no crate nonsense behavior so if they don't whine or bark in their kennel it comes off at night and then that's when i charge it the reason being is i don't want them to be become collar smart um so i'm very crafty with my tools and i'll go over another way i mean that in a second um but i don't want them like if they don't listen i have no way to follow through if they don't have a tool on and so now i'll go to put the e-collar on because let's say your dog's barking so now you're like okay put the collar on and now i'm going to say no and correct the dog's like oh like they 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 think in pictures so they'll be like collar one on i get corrected so if collar's not on nothing happens mm -hmm. they do really collar smart. and then the other thing is i really i don't want to say hate because i don't hate many things but i dislike when people use this as a warning like so dogs think in pictures right mm -hmm. and so people will say um i don't have to use the collar i just have to show my dog i'm like please don't do that you know why because that's giving this all the power this isn't the power this is me mm -hmm. here oh i want the dog to respect me when i say no so i have all my training dogs i would say yeah i would say all of them when i say no and it's flat like that no they're like oh god if they're the one doing something and they know yeah they're like oh man yeah if they're the one doing something up. wrong they stop because they're like oh crap because my, i'm powerful that my no is someone else's hmm? Hmm? Well, you better listen no it should be you so I'm very crafty with my e-collar too. Like I always have it in my hand because I don't want the dog to associate me picking it up. So me picking it up, they feel the stem. No, if I'm tra actively training my dog, I'm gonna have it in my hand and ready because I know they're still learning. So they're gonna be corrected. So I don't want them to put the pictures together like that. I want the picture to be no correction, not no pick this up correction. And I've seen it. And it's, it makes yeah. me sad. Because Can I tell you? Yeah. Oh, sorry. You weren't done talking. Okay. No, go ahead. Gaia. Okay, so got her from a place that I think is Judo. Um, and took a lot of work getting her to be the dog that she is today. Um, but she had to have been I threatened with this constantly. Uh, when I first got her, she was unrecognizable from the dog she is now. She's come such a long way. I, she, I couldn't, she couldn't see this. Like if we were outside, I would like try to get her to play. Um, and she loves the jolly ball. If she saw this remote, she would not play like at all. So I'm like, oh my gosh, it was, it took a long time for me to desensitize her to this. So I would like wear it around and carry it and like pick it up and give her a treat. And like, it was a whole thing that it's like, this isn't bad. Now you acting like a jerk. Or, no, I'm just kidding. Like, you know, you, like, disobeying an obedience command. Yeah, that's a problem. But this, this is nothing. Don't worry about this. Um, so, yes, it does really irk me. Like, don't threaten your dogs with things. Like, even just anything. Just don't. Like, mm -hmm. no, and there's a consequence or not. Like, I'm not going to be like, meh. I don't know. It just irks me. It took me right. so long to get her. It took me so long to get her to not, like, be scared as crap when she saw this. Mm -hmm. um, and then on a lighter note, when you talked about putting the e-collar on in the morning when you get dressed, yeah, <laughs> I do say that to Gaia. I'm like, get dressed. Um, so I'll hold out the e-collar and I'm like, get dressed, and she comes and puts her head over top of it, oh, and I buckle God. her up. Um, <laughs> and then I say, get naked. I'm like, you ready to get naked? And she'll run over to me and like sit beside me, and I'll take her collar off. Oh my God, 
That is adorable. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, okay, so literally, guys, that is okay, a good look. example of how to teach your dog anything. Mm -hmm. So she just taught her dog get naked means taking your collar off. How mm -hmm. do you do that? So you pair a picture with a word. You get the dog to do a picture. Once the dog's doing a picture, link whatever word you want to it. And so I'll touch briefly on this. You can baby talk or talk to your dogs all you want. I don't care. You can tell them, hey, how's it going? You're enjoying the weather, blah, blah, blah. You're having a conversation with them, right? But when you go to link something or if you go to do a command, make it very flat. Like it's very simple. It's just that one word because I don't want it to get lost in the jumble of other words. So she just linked taking the collar off with get naked. So you could do that with anything. Like anything you know you go to the door and then you're like who's there so every time you walk to the door with your dog you're like who's there so after you do that like dozens of times if you say who's there i bet your dog will go run to the front door mm -hmm. so it's like do a behavior now say a word with it and then that's how you do it like it's that simple so i always say like dog training is simple it's not always easy but it's very simple I love that. I, love I always forget it. And then every time you say it, I'm like, oh my God, I need to write that down and like frame it somewhere. Because like it is like when you think about it, it's like that makes sense. And when you like progress to other stuff, it's not easy, right? Or not yeah. always easy. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. The That's basics are easy. It's like, how do you get there? Mm -hmm. You know, different dogs need different things. But yes. <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah. I to, oh no, I was just gonna, I was trying to think. There's something else that I like called Gaia when it meant and like didn't mean it. Um, but I can't remember. What it was. I think it's. Oh yeah, I taught her. I'll be right back. Um, so if I gotta like just run downstairs real quick and I'm coming right back, um, I'll say I'll be right back. And she sits and waits. And I've got nanny cam, so I've watched her before. And she sits and waits and looks at the door until I come back. But if I'm like, okay, bye, and I leave. She's like, okay, and goes and lays down. And lays down. <laughs> so I'm like, why do you know that? Because one day I was like, why do you know what that means? And then I caught myself every time I leave. I'm like, right back. And then I'm gone for like a second. And then I come back. And I'm like, you're so stupid. I'm just like, oh. Dogs are great. They're so great. They really are. Love my job. All right. Pick a number. One, two, or three. Hmm. Two. How important is exercising your dog? Well, apparently guy is fat, so um no the vet said she was over right. Um how important is it? How important is it for me to exercise? I mean it's an important <laughs> Okay, no. <laughs> Let me be serious. So, okay. It depends on your dog. I don't know. I don't know your dog. I don't know you, I don't know your life. Yeah, walk your dog, get him out, do your things, but don't forget about mental exercise. Um, cause I'm assuming this question is about physical exercise. Cause when you hear exercise, that's where the mind goes, right? So if you've got a Malinois, it's going to be pretty important that you exercise that sucker, right? But if you've got like a couch potato pig or like a pug or something, like, don't get me wrong. They need to get out. They need to move their body. They need to live their life. But like priority for like that Mal, yeah, it's a little different, you know? Um, but this wasn't the question, but when I don't really have a solid answer, I just kind of like talk about something else. Um, <laughs> how important is it for you to give your dog mental exercise? Extremely important. So there's my non-answer for you. <laughs> yeah, so like, I, I guess this is one of my topics that gets me going or like I care about, I don't know, I care about all dog training, but I dislike when trainers tell owners to exercise the crap out of their dog to stop a behavior. Um, so they'll be like, you know, make sure you ex exercise your dog more. Are you taking for a walk, you know, two hours a day and whatever. That's not going to stop your bad behavior. Like at first your dog might be exhausted, you know, and now, so now your dog's not barking all, you know, all day because they're exhausted. But after days of doing that, you're training an athlete. So your dog is going to get used to running like that. And so now he's like, yeah, two hour walk and then comes back and he's like, yep. And I'm going to start barking again. 
because you're training an athlete. So now you just have an out of control athlete, <laughs> you know, like who wants that? Because, okay. So I used to take Sadie swimming. Well, I mean, I take her sometimes now, but she loves swimming. So when she was younger, she was a crazy fool. Yeah. Crazy fool. So I would take her swimming and on the ride home, she'd be conked out and she's conked out for the rest of the day. She got older and whatever, like, but I would take her swimming. I, and it ended like I would take her swimming and she would sleep on the ride home. We'd get home and she'd grab a ball and be like, let's play. And I'm like, are you serious? Because I'm exhausted from that trip to the swimming pool and you actually swam and you're fine. And then same with like a walk. We, it was literally every time my husband and I would take Sadie for a walk, we'd come back, we're exhausted. We went on the same walk you did. And she comes in and grabs a ball and she's like, let's play. And I'm like, can you just lay down? Like, please, can you lay down? So it's like, you're training an athlete. So make sure they can behave without the exercise. So my, if your dog has a lot of energy, exercise is awesome. But honestly, I'm an advocate for mental exercise too. Like even over this exercise, because I think, Exercise is just overused to fix issues, and it's not do that. Right. Um, so don't ever believe anybody that's like exercise your dog more to make them stop doing X. No. Um, uh, um, go ahead. Sorry, we were both just like, oh. Um, that made me think of a great analogy. Because uh, you know, guys, I love analogies. Like I really do. Um, and like just comparing mental versus physical exercise. So imagine, like, put yourself in their shoes, right? So imagine that you go and run a marathon, right? Lots of physical exercise there. And then you get home, do whatever, you're ready to go to bed. You've probably got a long list of things that you didn't do today or things you got to do tomorrow. I got to do this and I got to do that. You're still thinking your brain is not tired. Your body is exhausted, but your brain is like, okay, I got to do that tomorrow. I got to get the groceries. I got to go do that, whatever, right? right. Or like me. Okay. Or imagine you've got a long day at the office or a long day at school, or you just took an exam or you did something. You're, you were working on Excel spreadsheets all day long in the office. Your brain is done. My brain is done after that, right? But then you get home and now you're like, Okay, I'm re- like my body is ready to go. I've got to move. But your brain is like, can you just shut up? <laughs> right? <laughs> so it's like, find the balance. So I want to exercise my brain. I want my brain to be feel fulfilled at the end of the day. But I got to move my body too or I'm going to be antsy. I got to go. Um, so our dogs, why would it be any different from them? Like I want you to have that mental exercise. I want you to be able to work your brain. And sure, let's go like take a walk if we need to so they can have that balance. But again, if it was one over the other, we might not have time for a walk, but your brain's gonna be working. So at least that's something because (laughs) they're gonna get a lot more tired from that mental exercise than they will from the physical exercise. Mm -hmm. Yep. You always got such great topics, Susan. Thank you, I try, I try. I don't. Okay, you ready? You ready for this one? Yeah, we got uh, seven minutes. Okay, this one this will be good. A good one to end on. Okay. What's your favorite trick to train? Trick. Hmm. Let's see. I don't know, man. So I haven't done much of it, but I really had a lot of fun training Gaia agility. And I'm I'm classifying that as a trick. Because I wasn't doing, obviously, hardcore agility with her. So, like, teaching her to jump over the um, thing or to run through a tunnel, that was so much fun for me and her. Um, But I think that – I don't guess I have one specific. Um, Maybe teaching her – it's, like, a wood plank stacked up, so it's, like, a solid wall. Teaching her to jump, that was a lot of fun because, like, it started with, like, this high off the ground. And she's like, oh, no, I can't do it. And the next thing you know, she's, like – full on springing over something. Um, that was a lot of fun for me. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and the tunnel's cool, especially for like the nervousy dogs. Right. You know? And um, Gaia, she's actually was like really hesitant about like touching things. Um, so for her, the closed tunnel, for her to go through that, like she opens up the cloth as she's running through. Um, 
that was really sweet. And then by the end of it, I had her, she went through a tunnel, a closed, a closed tunnel. We didn't never did an open tunnel. Well, we did when we were home, but when we had a little jelly set in Rhode Island, she did the closed tunnel, jumped over three things and then jumped through a little like tube thing. Um, and I got like all of those like chained together and then like big jackpot at the end. Oh, um, that was so, so fun. fun. Mm -hmm. loved it. Oh, what about you? What's your favorite trick? Well, now that you said agility, um, I don't have an agility set, but in Rhode Island, that was my favorite thing to do. Like I would always, because in Rhode Island, the dogs were worked the crap out of, mm -hmm. um, on commands only, not a lot of fun stuff at all. Mm -hmm. So, um, if they had been worked or like, I'd make sure I did like one command cause so there they had multiple trainers and everyone kind of had their hands on the dogs. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you could look through their log and be like, Oh, look, people did like six sessions of all their obedience commands. So I'm going to, cause I'm just the intern. So I won't get right. in trouble. Right. I'm like, I'm going to go ahead and do something fun with this dog. So I love doing the agility stuff because it was all fun. Trick training and agility. There's no corrections. It's all food stuff so you would see the dog's like mind change and there was a dog that he was there for severe human aggression and mm -hmm. he loved going back there so he was at the end kennel right by the door of the agility room and i'd be taking a dog in there and he'd be like because he's like what about me <laughs> it was so cute and then when you get them back there their mind changes instead it's that of that, happy they're like, place yeah they're like yes because they nothing bad happens yet like they don't get in trouble and it's just all food. So that was, I loved seeing that. Now I don't have that set um, here. I'll send so, the link. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so my favorite is probably touch right now. That is um, really fun. I love it because it's just like you say touch and you can end up like, it, it always blows my mind what the dogs know. Cause I'm like, how did you know to go touch that thing? Because I taught you it. But it's so cute because you'll see their mind like, oh, and then they go over and like poke it and then come mm -hmm. back. So, um, my food now. Yeah, and they come back. They're so excited. So I have this like touch stick. It's on like a wobble. I'll go get it. I know. I need to get one of those. Um, touch is a lot of fun. And you've got little like going a good ways for it now, don't you? Like she's got uh, like, turns around and goes to it. Yeah, little turns around and goes to it. Sadie actually will go across the room for it. Nice. So it looks like this, and it's nice because this little weeble ball, so if the dog runs over and hits this thing, it like weebles but doesn't fall down. It's a weeble wobble. Um, <laughs> so it's really nice because it doesn't like fall on the side and it just stands up. I love this thing, and I'm like, I'm getting this thing, so I did. I and how you, you can first, or like you can take this out too. So like this is just the touch stick itself, so I can be like, hold it in front of the dog, they touch it, good job. Now I can end up putting it in this thing so I can end up mo moving the distance from where the dog can touch it. So it's on the other side of the room. And like with Sadie, I can say, I'm not going to say it because she's actually mm -hmm. sitting in the corner, but I, I can say the T word and she'll go over and be like, uh, and like hit it with her face. <laughs> so cute. Just love it. Mm -hmm. um, but the one I like teaching client dogs, if they don't know it, is roll over. Because everyone loves to see their dog roll over. It's the cutest mm -hmm. thing in the world. So for clients, I like, oh, high five. Um, for clients, mm -hmm. I like uh, roll over because they just, it's impressive, you know. Right. But I don't, I don't know if anybody knows, if you don't start young as a puppy, that one can be really hard to train as an adult. If you're, if the dog is nervous. Yeah, because they're like, why am I going to go on my back like that, man? Right. And like my hand, so you're, if the dog, there you go. If this is a dog laying on a side, my hand has to be like over it so that I can end up doing this. Mm -hmm. and some dogs, they're like, what are you doing? <laughs> so yeah. you would think it wouldn't take that long. Sometimes. It's pretty time consuming. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I do want to go ahead and end it here. So this whole thing can fit on Instagram. I'll have to chop it up. Um, yeah. But thank you, everybody, for watching. We love doing Q&A Tuesday. Uh, so excited that we are, our followers are going. We had uh, more people watching today. So 
super exciting. Tell your friends. We want to answer all your dog training questions. Like that's what we're here for. Um, you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Pack Leader Dog and at Rachel Collar Dog Training. Have a great day and happy training. Yeah.